Well, good morning. Welcome as we gather for worship wherever you are. This is Thanksgiving week. And as we enter this time of worship, I think what Olivia played this morning is very appropriate for our topic. As we talk about giving thanks, a song counts your blessings, count them every one, is very appropriate. I know that as you gather for worship today, you also are thinking about this week, what our traditions have been and how for this year, for most of us, they will be changed. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So today is Christ the King Sunday, and in our scriptures there is an acknowledgement of the place, the role in our lives of Jesus Christ. And there also is this attitude of gratitude of thanksgiving for all the blessings you receive. Let us pray. Author of life, you created us in your image. Your image is relationship, three in one, creator, Christ, and spirit. You called us into relationship, and at times we hear that call, but often we separate. We divide, we leave, and at times we marginalize and oppress. We seek our own sense of justice in which we are right and those opposed to us are wrong, instead of seeking your justice, in which you seek the lost and least and bring back to the flock. God, help us to follow you. The Good Shepherd, as you desire for us to recognize that we are all part of your pasture, help us, author of life, to acknowledge that you have written us all into the book of life so that we might have life abundantly, and you gave your life for us. As we celebrate Thanksgiving, help us to be thankful to you for all of creation, but most importantly, that you have written us all into creation, that we all have our place to act and work and belong, and help us to seek the lost and least that they may know that they are a part of your flock, your creation, your life that you have given us. In the name of Christ, the living word, we pray. Amen. Well, if your order of service is before you, please respond with me in the bold print in our call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We glorify God with our songs of thanksgiving and joy. God has done great things for us, filling us with grace. God fed our ancestors in the wilderness. God clothes us with hope. We will offer our hearts to God, always saying thank you to the one who loves us. We will sing our praises, shouting of God's presence in our lives. Our opening hymn this morning is one that we would have sung had we gathered for a Thanksgiving midweek service. It is We Gather Together. Please sing along where you are as you choose to.
Our psalm reading this morning comes from Psalm 95, and it is a song of praise. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. And we prepare ourselves once again for another week. Sometimes living our lives moment to moment, day to day. But we do prepare by coming before God and getting vulnerable. Vulnerable as we confess what it is that has not gone well. What it is we feel that we could have been a part of and we chose not to. And sometimes even just confessing the attitudes that we have had in these divisive times. If the liturgy is before you, you are welcome to join in unison this prayer of confession. Living God, we confess to you that our ways of justice are not your ways. We want others to be punished when they have done wrong, but we desire forgiveness for ourselves. We want others to suffer when we have suffered. Even in times where we feel morally just, we desire vengeance over restoration. God, forgive us for our desire of retribution. Forgive us for not seeking your ways. Forgive us most of all for not recognizing that it was you who died on the cross at Calvary, going to death rather than seeking vengeance, giving eternal life, and the promise of new life here on earth. Forgive us when we do things that seek to deepen wounds rather than bring healing. In the name of Christ, the great physician, we pray. Amen. Take a few moments of silence for your own personal prayer. Hear these words from Romans 8 that assure us of the forgiveness. There is nothing you can do to separate yourself from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus the Lord. Go with this good news. Amen. Well, our other scripture readings include a reading from the book of Ephesians, Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, and from the Gospel of Matthew. This is a, in Ephesians, this is really a tribute to those new believers that are holding on and also a prayer that reminds them of all that God has done and is doing for them. Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not give, cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? 
God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And then from Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All of the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and we gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to, to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away and be eternal punishment with the righteous into eternal life. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Well, last week as we gathered, we talked about being armed with an attitude of gratitude. How's that going? Did you begin to find your own rhythm to practice forming it into a habit? Well, I look forward to hearing your stories. Please share them. We are learning and we're growing together day by day. Last week, gratitude. This week, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, our focus is on giving thanks. It is important to say thank you because we recognize the source of the blessing. So what comes to mind when you think of Thanksgiving Day? I'm sure that's where many of you have been recently knowing that things have changed for this year and will be different. I am guessing you have been revisiting many of those memories, grieving a little bit because of the change being brought to us to be safe during the pandemic. Well, for the non-vegetarians, maybe it's the smells as that turkey browns in the oven, as some of the other things are baking. That richness of smell that permeates the house. And maybe it's even thinking about some of those special dishes that a certain family member made and suddenly they became tradition and needed to be a part of every time you gather. And remembering not only the dishes, but the people. The people that you will be unable to
to gather around the table this year. Well, there are ways, even in the midst of all that, that we can show gratitude. Maybe it's even calling the person that would have brought that dish and sharing and reliving the memories together. And maybe this is the year to create a new tradition that can be carried into the time when we once again can safely gather. And gratitude is good for us. And if you've been practicing, you know that it feels good. So why don't we do it any more often than we do? Well, some of the research that is done has come up with three specific things that sometimes hold us back from feeling and expressing gratitude. Sometimes it's even just we don't even recognize the gifts that we have received. We don't perceive grace when it happens. We don't, we just think that the daily things in our lives, those blessings are just normal. And we don't think to acknowledge and give thanks for those. Secondly, sometimes we think we deserve what we have. It's our sweat equity. It's what we've done that has gotten us to this place that has brought us these things. We were the ones who studied. We were the ones who practiced. We were the ones who developed our talents. Huh. And with that attitude, the only one you think you thank is yourself. The third one, sometimes we just forget. Life keeps happening. You keep moving forward. And to do what needs to be done and you don't think to stop back and express your gratitude. We get so busy working through our to-do lists that sometimes we just absolutely forget to express it. Well, the same study said that when they interviewed throughout our country, 90% of people think gratitude is important, but only 52% of women and 44% of men express their gratitude on a regular basis. So that ends up with this gap between what we say we believe and what we actually do. What I'm learning, and I hope you're learning too, that expressing gratitude, feeling gratitude, is good. Expressing it is even better, and it has more power. Saying thank you out loud to another human being, taking the time to reflect on it, to write it down, to pay it forward. All of these are part of this discipline that we're trying to develop together of gratitude. And like so many other disciplines, the more we practice it, the more natural and spontaneous it can become. Think of our gospel lesson today. Both groups said, when? When did we do this? The first group so automatically took care of other people, took care of those that were in need, that it didn't even occur to them. <clears throat> that this was an important part of their relationship with God, they did it out of that well of gratitude that they had. They just did it automatically. So it is a factor of our faith. Praise is love improvising its answer to God's love. Our psalm reading today was a song that did just that. You, you just hear those words, and it's like it soars to the rafters. A song of praise to God. Because our gratitude to God not only honors God, but it's good for us too. It takes us to that place of acknowledging that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God. And that's the attitude with which we are to live. 
gratitude is, it's a spiritual practice. It's looking around, it's seeing the good in the world around you. Learning to notice the good does take practice. But every time you flex that muscle, it grows stronger. And yes, it is hard sometimes today, isn't it? You watch the news and it begins to overwhelm you. You begin to see all the negative. And yet that goodness still exists. And that goodness, when we look for it, begins to reorient ourselves and takes us out of that negative, overwhelmed attitude. So that we don't always focus on the bad. There are realities we're living in, no question about it. There are difficult times. That's what we're dealing with day to day. But we can't stay there. We need to be able to see goodness so that we can go the distance that we've been called to do because of this pandemic, because of the things we're doing to love one another and keep one another safe. We need to not only see the negative in the world because it will affect our lives and not in good ways. When we are aware and we're attuned to what we see in the world that is not right, that is not fair, it, it grows within us from this attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving it grows within us to do what we can to heal, to care, just like the ones Jesus spoke to on the right. They were moved to do it. They were moved out of love, just automatically, to do everything they could to make someone's life better. It is the way in which our world can change. So that's where we are today. How do you say thank you to this author of life? The one who created everything we see, the one who created us. This God who loves us so deeply. And I think we all can realize that it isn't enough to just say words. Our thank you needs to be with our whole lives. And that's when gratitude becomes action. So that's where our gospel lesson takes us. It shares with us that we are asked to do these simple, caring things for people in need, often called the least, the lost, and the left behind. To meet those simple needs of life many of which we take for granted in our own lives. To care, to feed, to bring water, to bring clothing, to visit and care for those who are ill, to visit and care for those who are in prison, to welcome the stranger. And it's interesting the way Jesus phrases it in the gospel, because he doesn't say, do it for me, does he? I ask you to do these things for me. That isn't what Jesus says. He says, when you do these things, you do them to me. What we are to do is to realize when we do serve, when we do care, when we do make a difference, it is Jesus we are serving. And it is his faith that we need to see in each person. And let's be honest, if we turn away, as he says in this parable, we're turning away from Jesus. Not only does what we need to do sound like simple acts, but this parable is a simple message. Minister to the people around you, or you're missing the whole point of living. It's not a parable about some future judgment, but about opening our eyes and our hearts and our hands in the here and the now to those in need. Because of how Jesus phrases this, that you do it to me, 
we know how we can give thanks to God in a way that God will hear clearly. So don't hear this story in Matthew 25 as a final judgment on your life. Here it is a wake-up call. Here it is an invitation, the way in which we can say thank you to the ground of all being. What if we approached every person, every place, every circumstance, every choice as if we see Jesus? That would change things, wouldn't it? If in every face, we saw the face of Jesus. We wouldn't look so much at the truth of someone else's life. We'd be looking at the truth of our own lives, that we have been blessed, that we have been given so much, that we are so freely loved, that the way we say thank you is to do the same for anyone else that's in need. It's not just this feeling of thankfulness that counts. The power is in the giving of it, the expressing of thanks. Giving thanks is what allows our heart, our perspective, and our attitude to change. It's how we get it out. And it never is that we, what we have, we deserve. We, we know that's not true. Everything that we have, everything that we are, everything that we see is a gift from God, a grace. We can't earn it. God gives it freely, gives love freely. That's a lot. And we have the opportunity to give thanks for all of that, to help, to care, to let that love, that gratitude, that thankfulness flow through us so that we follow this map, this all life encompassing map that Jesus has placed before us, this action, all these actions that we're to take to express that all encompassing love of God. It isn't really gratitude if it doesn't prompt us to act. Being thankful, being grateful, if it is real, will always give way to doing. When we do open our eyes to see how truly blessed we are, the gifts that we do have, even in the midst of difficult circumstances like we live today, we can too see the real needs in our sisters and our brothers. When we open our hands to receive the good gifts that God showers upon us, we must open our hands to bestow those gifts on others. Again, if we saw everyone as Jesus, how would we respond? We would see everyone as our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our grandparents, our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, our aunts, our uncles, the family of God. Everything that we have and everything we are is a gift from God. And since it is not the result of our own effort, it's so freely given, it should raise up in us our wanting to give deep and profound thanks to God. And Jesus shows us how we do that. We notice people who are struggling. We find ways to improve and care for their lives. We see in them the same love, the same dignity, the same personhood that God sees in each of us. And we act out of gratitude and thankfulness. We are all the beloveds of God. There's no one we were encountered who is not the beloved of God. So caring for all the beloveds of God 
is the best way we can give thanks. And from Colossians 3, For whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as we come to our time of prayer, we know that everyone who is joining today is carrying a burden. Everyone who is joining today has a joy in their life. We bring all of that into our times of prayer. And right now, in the midst of all the uncertainty in the midst of watching these numbers as they rise, we are aware that we need the gifts of discernment that God can give to make the best decisions that we can. Before I share prayer requests and share our prayers of intercession, I want to share a prayer that came to me this morning from one of our clergy. She is very gifted in the writing of prayers, Abigail Ozan. She serves in Browns Valley and also Sisyphan. So let us pray these words that she has gifted us with this morning. Please be in an attitude of prayer. God of all wisdom, these days every decision seems to be a calculus equation as we try to do what we need to do and what we want to do while remaining safe. We want to go out, do things, be together with others. We try to rationalize our choices so that we can do what we want. Yet we also know that even coffee with friends can have serious consequences. We weigh wants and desires, levels of risk, the physical and emotional impacts of our choices. Sometimes it still feels like we're trying to solve an equation with a division by zero. As we make decisions, May we keep in mind how what we do affects others. Give us the strength to do the right thing, the most loving thing, even if it is not what we want. We know that life is sacred. Help us to honor life with our actions and do no harm. In your great understanding, guide us to discern wisely, we pray. Amen. So today, we add to your prayers several that we would like included. As some of you may be aware and some of you are not, um, Darren Athey, in the midst of his work, encountered a man who was violent, and he was punched in that process. His jaw was broken in three places, which required surgery. He is home and doing well. Of course, the pain is part of this journey. So prayers for Darren and the whole family. And as we pray for Darren, pray for our law, law enforcement. You know, when they walk up to a vehicle, their intention is to help and to serve. But it isn't always safe. And so we need to hold them in our prayers as they do the work they do to protect us and keep us safe. Chris Fickus needs our prayers in his journey of grief in the loss of Candace so suddenly. As he is in this grief journey, also this week, his children were involved on their way to school in a car accident. They are doing fine. But it's a lot for one family to deal with, so please hold them in your prayers. We have many who are ill. Many, of course, it is COVID or it is quarantine because they know they've been exposed. But there are others that that question hasn't been answered of the are ill and are quarantining to be safe. Um, we add to our prayer Shirley Libin, although she's feeling so much better. Um, she said she would love the prayers to keep that feeling good continuing as she heals from this respiratory infection that she has had. If you have the order of worship before you, um, we are entering into these prayers of intercession, and 
When I say, God, in your mercy, your response is, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we give you thanks for this day, this chance to worship with our neighbors and praise your name. For you are the one, the only, the great I am, the God of all creation. We bring to you our triumphs and sorrows, our joys and cares, our daily lives. All that we are is yours. Hear the voices of your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, you have brought us into community with people of every time and place. We give you thanks and praise for this gift. Open the hearts of all your people that we may see our differences as a joyful expression of your never-ending creation. Instill in us a spirit of acceptance and understanding. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saving God, you have blessed us with life-giving grace through Jesus Christ. We ask that you sustain those who seek to alleviate the pain and suffering of this world. Give strength, courage, wisdom, and knowledge to all doctors and orderlies, nurses and clerks, psychiatrists, researchers, and all other medical caregivers, volunteers, and professionals. Send your life-giving spirit so that their ministries may be he bring healing and promote health. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, be also with those who work to heal the wounds of societies and nations. Guide, protect, and strengthen our lawyers and police, chaplains and pastors, health care and social workers, politicians, military, diplomats, and all others who work for economic and social reform. Send your life-giving spirit that they may promote your love and grace bringing healing to those in conflict and stability to those who are vulnerable. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you are the source of all health and well-being. We especially bring before you the children of our community and the world who have no one, who are victims of neglect by parents whom we have failed to guide, protect, and nurture. Open our eyes and ears to the needs of children around us and bring them into your loving care and keep them safe and whole. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember now before you all those who have suffered, are suffering, or in need of your protection and prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With joy and gladness, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. While there are many things outside of our control, the ability to love one another well cannot be taken from us. We can choose with whom we practice solidarity. We can choose to practice our values together. With imagination and hope, let us bring our gifts to God and one another as we open ourselves to the Spirit's leading. You may join in the unison prayer. God of justice and God of mercy, you confront us in the ordinary, stirring our desires for more, luring us to futures more just, challenging our stubborn commitments to what is familiar. You ask us to take risks with and for each other. Do not let us settle for what is because we are afraid. Receive our offerings and bless them to the work of worlds being made new. Amen. Well, as we do go forth today, I know it's hard. I know this week normally would be so different than what we know it will be. You are held in prayer. You are held, too, in the heart of God 
as you make the decisions to care for one another. Our closing hymn is a, is a song of praise to creation for the beauty of the earth, and you are welcome to sing wherever you are. Once again, if the words of liturgy are before you, you may respond in the bold print in this prayer of dismissal. The God of laughter sends you out so that we can share joy with everyone. The brother of the poor sends you out so that we may bring hope and healing to the broken and despairing. The spirit of wonder sends you out so that we may join all creation in offering thanks. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.